All right. Cheers to uh, Vietnamese coffee. Cheers, bro. What's going on, guys? We are here in Ho Chi Minh, Saigon, Vietnam. And today, we just want to have a conversation with you guys. How we had come up with today's topic is learning how to be a vulture, aka taking advantage of opportunities um, regarding finding leads for Amazon FBA because we were in a 16 hour flight yeah. going to Vietnam and, you know, a lot of time in our hand. And one of the ideas that had come up for this uh, podcast is just talk about it, you know. And we had some personal examples that we can share how we had kind of thought about this idea. Uh, taking advantage of opportunities and wanted to share that with you guys and uh, yeah what other topics we can get into yeah. actually let me just start a timer here too because we're not joe rogan here we don't got three hours we try to keep it 30 minutes or below um but yeah can i just talk about like how we had come up with it originally and um the whole topic yeah so as you mentioned we were on a 16 hour flight here really it was about 24 hours of flying total, not Crazy. even including the layovers. So we definitely had some time to brainstorm and uh, we just kind of got back to talking about, we actually mentioned it on one of the previous episodes, just the more time that you put into things, mm -hmm. you just start to see, you either gain new ideas or start to see new opportunities. And what's really important is when you see these opportunities to start learning how to take full advantage, advantage of yeah and it takes a little while at first like even now it still happens where hindsight's 2020 you're looking back on certain things like man i wish i could have went harder on this or vice versa maybe i shouldn't went as hard on this so really the closer you can get to trusting your intuition i feel like and going with your gut is you're just going to have more success with things yeah and i feel like that comes with experience and it you know, you're going to make mistakes. You mentioned it's not just like, oh, I wish what I, I bought more, but it's also like, damn, I did buy a lot and now yeah. I'm kind of stuck yeah. with it. But at the end of the day, like, you know, use it's, that as a, a lesson, how yeah. you can uh, work it in the future deals and stuff. It's the yin and the yang. You gotta, you gotta have that fine balance between things. Cause that happened to us with a certain product and yep. you know, you come to a, um, what do you call that? Like a two paths, whether you eat crossroads. Yeah, crossroads, whether you hang on to the item or you get rid of it at a loss, but you kind of recoup that. Cause that happened to me this morning when I was doing my repricing, yeah, right? We were just talking yeah. about that. So, you know, um, it's good to have someone that you can refer to talking about Amazon. So that's why this is like networking thing is huge or, you know, one or two people doesn't have to be anything major, but someone you can kind of shoot the idea. It's like, Hey, like, what do you think of this item? Like, this is what I owe it for. If I sell it, I might lose, you know, four or five bucks. Yep. And I was kind of just seeing the idea of like, all right, I'll hang up for a couple months or whatever, like the storage fees and that bad. But mm -hmm. like your, um, where you were coming from was like, just sell it at a loss because you can get that money back, recoup it and maybe buy a better profitable item that you can flip, you know, multiple times rather than me holding it for, you know, X amount of months. You know? Yeah. Cause you got to think about it when you're in this business an inventory based resale business, <clears throat> you Cash need to be flow. overturning inventory as quick as possible. Let it flip, man. Exactly. Even if it means taking some items at a loss, a good way I like to describe it too, is out of every 10 ASINs, if seven out of 10 are profitable, two out of 10 are break even and one out of 10 is at a loss you're still doing good. But what's funny is when you, once you see that one item that sometimes you need to take a loss on, you get foggy headed about it. You you're get like, stuck. You get stuck, bro. Like, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. So oh, the overall <laughs> picture though, if you're buying profitable inventory and you're doing good with your sell through cash flows coming in, then you're doing good. And it's okay to take some items at a loss. We were just like, after we talked about that, I started looking through old ASINs. Like I've been holding on to some of this shit for, you know, three months, yeah. upwards three, four months, and the price just wasn't where I want it. Like I have to take a decent loss on some of it. And it's not a lot of inventory, but when I was seeing that for the last three months, I was just thinking in my head, like, oh, I'll try and wait for the price to rebound. But really, sometimes you just need to get that Move cash on, back yeah. so you can continue flipping it. Exactly. All right. Let's not get too sidetracked with that and kind of go back to the topic. How, how did we first stumble upon this opportunity or like the idea of like, you know, being a vulture, like literally, cause a vulture, 
is a opportunistic animal, you know, fly around somewhere looking for, you know, easy prey, you know, to take on. And having that mindset in terms of like looking for deals is just being attentive to what's going on out there and just having as much like, um, what you call it, like ice, but like you want to make sure there's opportunities that you see that where you can like, all right, this is it right here. I've been kind of hunting, but I'm gonna go into this one and buy that product. So how did you first kind of like stumbled upon that? Like the idea was like, all right, this is like hunch that I have. It's going to be a good buy. I'm going to go in, spend as much as I can. Cause I know this will sell. Yeah. Not sell. It will sell, but like make profit. So the first time I really noticed an opportunity like that, there had been a couple smaller ones, but really, I think it was about after nine months of us just chopping it up. Was it the one that the store that we went to? Yes. It was. Yeah. Okay. So we, were, we won't give it away, you guys. You know. But, but we were um, just putting in a lot of time with a couple of suppliers, and you start to see new things when you're working the same websites, even looking over the same deals. Whether it be using rewards to make things profitable, you know, a lot of retailers have different rewards programs like Kohl's and whatnot. Um, and just continually working with some of these suppliers started to notice new opportunities. And then it just so happened, since we were working with them so closely, we ended up seeing a new opportunity that we hadn't once seen before. And really went in on it for for a good little... Yeah, but we can even backtrack how we stumbled upon it. It's just one of those things that I was doing a return at Bed Bath & Beyond and the store next to it was, you know, like yeah, you I, were just like, yeah, let's go see what happens. Like, let's just walk in there, you know? And I was like, I, I was like, whatever, let's go. We're right yep. next to it. It yep. wasn't that far. Because we and, had been hearing about it yeah, beforehand, but yeah. I hadn't, had never experienced it. Yeah. Myself. And we walk in, there was a good sale. Was it 50% or something yep. along that line? Yep. And we didn't really find anything at first because we yeah. were, this one, we were still early, or at least I was, and you were kind of were, and we were stuck in finding this one brand. This is one brand. That's all yep. we had. But like, that's the beauty about just exploring out there you know if you're doing retail arbitrage scan different things there's just so many brands out there that you'd never think is on amazon um that you may be able to sell and stuff like that so it was on the back wall it they were just sitting there it was scanned yes. it super low um rank. sales rank yep. like really low really, really low profitable yeah and, and it's an amount of quality <laughs> too and everyone had been missing it yeah and, including us for a while yeah now. I was just like, wow, this is crazy. And yeah, that was the time. And we had, we bought a bunch of like a lot of items. Like the next day we had to come back to like fill up our cars and yeah. stuff like that. And after that we were like, crap, dude, did we buy like more than we could, you know? And then what's funny after we spent the time to, you know, we were literally in your garage <laughs> yeah, for two days it. until what? Three, four in the morning. Yeah. Prepping getting it. Prepped, having UPS come and fill their truck up the next day and we were like did we like you said yeah did we buy too much and then hindsight is 2020 after yep. seeing it check in and the sell through we're like like damn why didn't we buy more yeah. <laughs> so that's a uh one scenario we like worked out for you know for our own benefit but there was also time um where it didn't work out where you know whether that's the price tank or uh, like Amazon went back in the listing or, yeah. or the, the brand itself just gets switched up sometimes. Yeah. When you're dealing with variations. Um, Another one we could, I, I, I just thought about was to during back to school. We did a little like uh Mr. Test by. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 And that ended up working out really good. Yeah. That, that's one of the scenario where you like could have bought more, you know, but like we mentioned too this morning, there are some times when it's the other way around. So again, trying to go with your intuition and the more you learn, you're gonna start to figure out what's good and what isn't. And you're gonna have those times where you know you should have went harder or you're happy you didn't. But again, it, it'll come with a little bit of experience and yep. it will come sooner than you think. Yeah, and e an easy one about this is like Q4. If it's your first time going through like the holidays, like uh, October to December, that's gonna be like, you know, um, a super good experience because the next time comes around you're going to be want to be prepared so like you're going to want to look what products that was like your best seller that was selling a lot and buy you know the the next year coming up like ahead of time stock up as much as you can and that's going to like 
the lessons that we brought um, this time. Sorry, guys, if it's a little loud. I think the the I don't know what this is. Like, an, <laughs> it's blowing. Started, it's it's gonna, blowing we smoke. <laughs> we got fountains and fishes down there, so hopefully the sound will be good. But um, we do apologize if you can't hear anything. And yeah, that's one good example of like going through the motion, like seasonality. Like we, you know, we kind of touched about like back to school. That's another good one, right? Yeah. Like winter season, summer season. There's a lot of opportunities. And when I first started, I, I started uh, selling used books and it was uh, college textbooks specifically. So yeah. there were two times during the year where it's really profitable, which is like, you know, September. Yep. when everyone's going back to school and also like january when everyone comes back from you know the first semester going back into it so you know kind of just like learn about these things depending on your niche um or it could be evergreen items that just like sell all year uh, all, yep. all year round yep yeah you really just need to think about some of these things like obviously during the winter things that are going to keep you warm is going to sell better and then vice versa in the summer things like I just do apparel, so I I could use the example of like shorts. Obviously, would yeah, sell a lot on. better in the summer. So kind of realizing these different things, and it it varies like that amongst all categories. You know, like even back to school, obviously shoes and things will sell really well for us. Yeah. But there's other things too, like whether it be makeup, uh, different crayons, um, back to school supplies, just different things like that, and just just think about it you know there's, there's a lot as long as you kind of get into that mindset of just like looking for these opportunities and kind of just start paying attention to them it'll, it'll slowly come i'm not saying it's going to be like an overnight thing because now we're still kind of learning about it and stuff like every year we're still learning to get more prepared for when these times come like back to school q4 and it just comes with that growth and a quick side note i just thought to mention is like you kind of said look back at items you've been selling you know, three, six, nine yeah. eight months ago, yeah. because some of these items that you may have sold through or may have had to do the break even or take a loss, they might be profitable again. Yeah. So it's really important to look back at items you've sold in the past to see, are they good now or are they still at a loss or a break even? Yeah. Especially if you're one of the early people that get into that listing before the actual peak of like the season, right? Like, um, yeah, event. exactly. You, you went really hard. Yeah, I did. And again, that's the item that I had sold the, the past year where I kind of came in like in the middle towards the late end of it. But like if you take mental note of that or like put it in a spreadsheet, even a better idea is kind of just go back to it, purchase it early, be one of the first people in there. Or as we were talking about seasonality, you got winter, your summertime. Uh, a lot of times like right now we're going into summer season in america like a lot of stuff like winter stuff they're they're gonna start doing clearances you know yep. as it's approaching so you can start really buying them in a really good deal or um another example is like maybe like a specific like brand or shoes do certain new models every single year you know so you can start paying attention to stuff that might be getting discontinued that you know are not going to be available anymore so that's one opportunity you can take advantage of it's like listen like this coffee here we can only get in vietnam let's get let's buy as many coffee these yep. and ship it out you know yep. like because you can't get anywhere else and keep in mind too if you can get anything cheap enough it, it's all profitable it doesn't matter whether it's out of season yeah. or anything if you can get stuff for the right price you can make money so don't be afraid to source out of season two or a niche weird different items that might stray off from things that other people you know are doing or vice versa yeah because at that you know specific item i mean if you can get it for three dollars and it sells for like 50 or whatever like worst case scenario you can lower your price because you have so much room yep. with <laughs> yep. with the margin that's where the evergreen comes into play of course different things like hoodies heaters they might be profitable really profitable in the winter, but don't be afraid to sell that stuff in the summer too. I've sold firewood before. Yeah. Like I've, you, you know, in the middle of summer. So again, if you can find stuff at the right price, that's the real evergreen. It doesn't matter whether it's out of season or not. And just kind of adding towards this as well is, you know, you hear the word bolo, be on the lookout. Mm -hmm. And when I actually missed this, when it was like a big deal in the Amazon world back in 
you know, 2020 when it was the chlorine, the pool yeah, stuff. Because yep. a lot of people really jump into selling on Amazon and taking advantage of that specific bolo. But it's a double-edged sword because a lot of people that joined during that time were relying into these items. They didn't really build a proper foundation of yep, exactly. how to find leads without having that easy, you know, like um, resource. Yeah. So they made that quick money, but a lot of them are out of the game now because they didn't really learn. Like yeah. You said. They're like, hey, why, why is Amazon so hard? I can't find anything profitable just because, you know, yep. they relied on that easy... And that's why it's so important, too. We can't stress enough. We've probably mentioned it every episode so far. You need to keep an open mindset and learn how to adapt because the business <laughs> will be changing year after year. Maybe even within the course of three months, it might be different. different. And yeah. with Amazon changing their rules on a consistent basis, fees going up. There's a lot need, of stuff going you on. Need to, you need to learn to be able to adapt. And again, that's why it's so great to try and find a community of like-minded individuals even if it's just one person to start just having someone that you can shoot the shit with and try yeah. and figure things out is is really important you just you can't have that closed-minded mindset so what other things you might be able to think in terms of taking advantage we talked about bolo um off-season deals seasonality uh let's see what else hindsight 2020 right yeah. Yep. Uh, anything else we can add about here? Um, to take advantage of opportunities, hindsight, okay. All right, what about lessons of being persistent? How can we use that in terms of how, how we use it to our advantage to be, you know, to be successful in terms of uh, Amazon? When you're being persistent, you just can start seeing things that may have been right in front of your face the entire time. Okay. The answer may have been right in front of you and you've just been bouncing around it without even realizing it. Being persistent can help you see these new things you may have not seen before. Does that make sense? Yeah, a little bit, but be specific in terms of your own experience. And <clears throat> Yeah, so like with the, with the supplier we ended up finding where we took advantage mm -hmm. um oh well, actually now you just lit a light bulb because i'm trying to remember what happened was we had asked the employee to see if there's any more items in the back a certain yep. size and stuff yeah, like that yeah. and then yeah. they ended up pulling out a full a full <laughs> yeah. load of stuff that otherwise we wouldn't have found if yeah we asking the right questions because or not yeah it was just like it wasn't even being persistent it's just like we were excited like hey do you have this you know yeah. more in the back uh available and stuff and that's how we had come upon it don't be afraid to ask you never know the worst they can say is no yeah or if you are you know working with a maybe i don't know like a wholesale guy or not even a wholesale guy just anyone anyone you're trying to get a deal it's like what if i take them out like this old inventory will you cut me a better deal um you know if i take it all or something like that you know just basic basic stuff that could be a good i still do that all the time actually to get the really profitable inventory i will take their slower moving skews to help build that relationship and just pick up more inventory overall if you're scratch if scratch your back scratch my back I scratch you scratch everything. you scratch their back you scratch mine like exactly, that type, type of yeah deal. because again these are mutual relationships you should both be benefiting from these type of things yeah and again these are like the lessons that you will learn along the way because neither of us had business experience before this is both of our like you know um serious business in terms of uh online and retail and stuff like that and we're learning along the way you guys and that's the biggest thing just don't be afraid to make mistakes you can always correct yourself or you can have a wonderful lesson they can use as part of your experience to make better decisions in the future and that's basically what it is. I mean, it might sound as cliche as, I don't know. No, like, the you know what I mean? You learn are from the losses you take. Yeah, because it might be an expensive lesson. But again, we try to minimize as much as possible and, you know, take advantage of the resources out there, like with the software, it's like Keepa, Seller Amp, um, the, uh, what, what else do you use? The, I'm blanking out right now, the Amazon Seller App, yeah. information, yep. all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot out there. You just, you, you have to con constantly be open and willing to learn. And uh, if you guys have questions, just, you know, comment in the video down below because 
we're going to start answering them and this going to help us again talk about topics yeah. anything you guys want to talk about we're going to start using those as uh ideas to start uh bringing content because we're out here right now in vietnam and very fortunate to be able to just travel and still have our business going and right now we're just doing minimal work just you know repricing or yep. kind of just doing some accounting stuff like that nothing too crazy because before making this trip you know we put in the extra work yeah your input equals your output the harder you work now you'll start seeing that progression or the reward from it in one two or three months even yeah you know that's what they say like for working out like you really won't start seeing those results until three months later and it's kind of similar with your amazon business the work you're doing now you'll really start to see if it was good or bad in you know two three months you'll start getting that reward from it yeah there's always a lag with it because you know when you purchase stuff you have to get it prepared ship it to amazon takes a couple of weeks to check in and you know get a wait for it to sell and stuff like that which is the reason why too some of these deals might only come around once or twice a year so the quicker you can get to learning when to really take advantage of these sales aka be a vulture the closer you'll get towards really seeing the rewards that you're looking for cool um anything else you want to add last message here tips advice just take advantage of the deals when you see them you know start learning more and more the closer you'll get towards really seeing the goals that you want to be achieved yeah and uh also add some motivation towards it like you know like one of those things is the trip like we had that end goal in mind that we're gonna make this trip so whatever time we had in between the trip and you know over there yeah. you make the best out of it and stuff yep. like that so yeah i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh topic in terms of taking opportunity taking advantage of opportunities be a vulture and just lessons and experience you learn along the way don't be afraid to make mistakes use it as lessons opportunities to make yourself better and yeah Success. we're good Peace. thank you so much i finished my coffee so <laughs> <laughs> this thing is addicting you guys this is the third one for today um really good vietnamese coffee is yeah one of the best yeah. cool all right guys